Where would I be if not for your grace carrying me in the
of Jesus. We thank you one more time for this day, this day where we rejoice in the new resurrection. Father, we pray right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the most holy one, King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, in our that minds will be touched, hearts will be touched, and souls will become brand new. Father, we pray on this resurrection day, O oh God, that if there's anyone in this assembly that do not know you in the heart of their sins, we do pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus for deliverance. We pray in the name of Jesus for Touch their minds and touch their hearts. And if there's any burden, Lord God, we know you to be a burden mover. If there's any troubled minds, we know mind where to live. And if there's anything in our hearts that's not right, Lord God, we forgive you. In the name of Jesus, we move it right now. That we may be the man and woman of God that you have called us, that you have a In your precious name. Father, bless us today, Lord. We welcome your presence here in the spirit. When we worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless our loving pastor, Pastor Rock and Husband. Bless the first lady and their family members and their loved ones. Bless all visiting ministers, Lord God, and guests, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless us as we continue to give praise and reverence unto your Lord. In the prison systems, Lord God. Lord God, test the drug addict and the prostitute. Trust the drug user, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. And we give you the praise and all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
behind you and said, Naaman, by the way, Naaman, you ought to run and tell that. Now give the Lord a hand praise for that. You ought to run. If you want to tell something, go run and tell. Go run and tell that. Go run and tell that. Go on back, Christopher. You ought to run and tell that. I, let me be honest with you. I got some bad news for y'all this morning. The bad news is that after staying up all night preparing for today, after staying up all week preparing for this moment, after the hours I put in the computer, after all the hours I put in the program, about 6 o'clock this morning, I turned on the computer and went to a website, and a malicious virus attacked the website and destroyed all the information I had. It destroyed my sermon. It destroyed the PowerPoint presentations. It destroyed everything. It was bad news, y'all. I didn't know what to do. I had two laptop computers, but being in the Army, one thing they always taught us was how to adapt and overcome. Look at your neighbor and say, adapt and overcome. So I rushed. I made a headway dive back to Baltimore with my computer. I got on the computer and I started working on this sermon one more time. I got on the computer and I got the bulletins printed out. And can I tell you by 11 o'clock, everybody had a bulletin. Everybody, we had the PowerPoint. Everything went out without a glitch. And I was saying that was bad news. And the truth of the matter is that when you look at life, everywhere you turn, there is some bad news. Can I get a witness here? Every time I turn on the news, I hear bad news. Every time somebody called me on the phone, I hate talking to people who the only thing they have to tell me is some bad news. Don't you hate hanging around negative people who don't have anything positive to say? They always, the sky's always falling. It's always too dark outside. The glass is always half empty instead of half full. I mean, they are gossipers. Anybody here know any gossipers? Huh? And can I tell you, when we look at this text, there was some bad news going around in the text. People had been around the cross in the text. And they said, did you hear the news about Jesus? Did you hear the news about Jesus and the seven things that he said? Did you hear what they said? Did you hear what they said? They said that, 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 that he died on a cross. He's supposed to be the king of the Jews and he can't even come off the cross. Did you hear what they said about Jesus? They don't know who his real daddy is. They say his daddy is Joseph, but I heard that he's really, his daddy is really somebody else. Did you hear about Jesus? They say every time he laid down, there's a disciple that's always laying on his breast. I think something going on between them. Did you hear about Jesus? He's always at the club doing an electric slide. He made water into wine. It's some bad news about Jesus, y'all. And here he is, y'all. Here's Jesus. Here's Jesus. Here's Jesus. Here's Jesus. They said you will not rise again. They said, in fact, he is not going to get up. But I come to tell you, I got some good news in some bad times. Anybody ready for some good news in some bad times? Because the text says that after they had buried him, they took him into a borrowed tomb. Let me give you my first point right here. You go there now, Chris. My first point is real simple. The stone is rolled away. Look at your neighbor and say, the stone is rolled away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And then they put a stone in front of him saying that he is not going to get out of here. There's no way in the world we're we going to keep him in the tomb. And right now, there's some folk who's trying to keep Jesus in the tomb. There's some folk trying to hide their religion. There's some folk right now don't want anybody to know about their relationship with Jesus. They don't want anybody to know that they're members of Ames Memorial. They don't want anybody to know that, that they are faithful and committed to the cause of Christ. We're trying to keep Jesus in the tomb. We try to keep Jesus in the tomb when we forsake our neighborhoods. We try to keep Jesus in the tomb when we are unconcerned about the poor and the lost, the least, and the last we keep Jesus in the tomb don't you remember when he said when I was hungry did you feed me when I was thirsty did you give me something to drink stop trying to keep Jesus in the tomb 
But Mary went to the tomb that day, and the first thing she noticed was that the stone was rolled away. And can I tell you something right now about the stone being rolled away? Jesus did not have to roll away the stone. He could have simply walked out. But can I tell you why he allowed the stone to be rolled away? He allowed the stone to be rolled away so that Mary could look in and see. And God is saying that there are some stones in our lives that's stopping us from seeing Jesus. We got some, some jobs, some relationships, some family and some friends who we have hooked up with. And the real problem is that there are stones in the way that are stopping us from seeing Jesus. That's why we can't get straight A's in school, young folk. That's why we can't get into college. That's why you can't get the job you always wanted. That's why the mate you always dreamed about ain't coming your way. Because you've got too many stones in the way. And the text says that remember Got to the tomb. Check this out, y'all. Check it out. The stone was rolled away so that she could look in and see that Jesus was not there. Can I tell you that Jesus moved that stone as an act of forgiveness? Yeah, it was an act of forgiveness. He didn't have to allow her to see that he wasn't there. But it was his way of saying, I want you to see that I still love you. I want you to see that I can still keep my word. The stone was rolled away. How many stones have you rolled away in your life? You've come here on this Easter day. Maybe you only come to church one day out of the year, but there are some stones that's been in the way. But not only that, not only was the stone rolled away, I'm going to be real quick, y'all, because some of y'all are ready to leave, but there's a second reason. There's a second reason. There's something else you ought to tell. The second thing you ought to tell is that the tomb is empty. Look at somebody and say, the tomb is empty. You know why that's important? That's important because the tomb being empty represents that good can triumph over evil. Y'all hear me? It represents that God's power can triumph over the evilness and the sadness and the blackness of Satan's power. The tomb is empty to represent that he won the fight. And I come to tell some of you that the tomb is empty for you today. The tomb is empty for you today that you can survive. Look at somebody and say, I can survive this. No matter what you're going through, God has already emptied the tomb just for you. Jesus is up just for you because his power is so, so, he's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. I mean, there's no one greater than the Lord. I mean, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell in. He's all-powerful. He knows what's going to happen before it has happened. So don't put your faith in your job. Don't put your faith in your spouse. Don't put your faith in your children, but put your faith in an all-powerful Jesus who's able to reach way down. Look at somebody and say, if you got to reach way down, he'll pick you up. No matter how bad you've been, no matter how wrong you've been in your life, no matter what you've done, no matter if you have a prison record, no matter if you have five baby mamas, six baby mamas, seven baby mamas, no matter if you got nine baby mamas, one abortion, two abortion, three abortion, the tomb is empty. Look at your neighbor and say it's empty. But I'm going to let you go on this last point. Not only is the stone rolled away, not only is the tomb still empty, but guess, guess what? Jesus is alive. Look at somebody and say, he's alive. Yeah, yeah, I know you think, I know you think, I know you think that the cross represents all that can happen, but the truth of the matter is that he's alive. And because he's alive, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all sin and shame is gone. He's alive. He's alive in the universe, y'all. Don't you ever wonder why is it that God allows uh, that certain things to happen in life? Why is it that uh, bad things happen to good people? Why, why, why? How is it that the earth can spin 
in his excellence stay there? How is it that gravity can pull us down? How, how is it that we still have a heartbeat? How is it that blood is still running? How is it that you went to the hospital and survived the surgery? How is it that you've been in jail but you're still here? How is it you got your college degree when you should have been kicked out? Can I tell you why? Because he is alive. That's why you came here on Sunday morning. Not because you had your Easter suit on. Not because you, you wanted to be seen. Some of y'all ain't been to church all year long. But you just wanted to come one day out of the year to say, he's still alive. And you know what? Can I tell you? I can tell you how I know he's alive. Because he's alive in me. I can feel him moving on the inside of my soul. He's alive in me. The old folk used to say, what is this I can feel deep down inside? What is this that keeps my soul on fire? Whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. Is there anybody here, y'all, who don't mind saying that there comes some times when you can't keep it to yourself? There are some times when it seems like all hope is gone. Can I tell y'all something? The other day, I went to the hospital and I saw Sister Beverly Boston. She was lying in her hospital bed. I expected her to be sad. I expected her to be gloomy. I expected her to be giving up. But when I walked in the room, I noticed one thing. She wasn't crying. She wasn't complaining. But she had a smile on her face. And you know what she said to me? She said, Reverend, God is still good. Is there anybody here who don't mind saying that God, look at somebody and say, God, God, God is still good. How do you know he's good, Reverend? Brother Mercy, you had to bury your mother the other day. But look at you here, sitting with the rest of your family, still have the activities of your limb. God is still good. Is there anybody here who don't mind waving your hand and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where, where, where would I be? And maybe there's somebody here right now who don't know Jesus in the part of your sin. You have a relationship with the Lord. But Amen. Brother Glenn, you have a relationship with the Lord, but you don't have a place to serve. This is a good place to come, y'all. You know, I met a fella yesterday who was telling me his story about what he had to go through to get to today. I see him here today. I'm not going to embarrass him. And don't you know, after seeing him, listening to him, listening to his story, I became inspired to do more for the work of God in Christ. I know there's another. There's another who wants to make a commitment today. He Turn that up, son. So you are Alpha and Omega. I know there's another. Just sing that with me as the spirit moves. Turn it up.
turn that up, son. The spirit is moving. Hallelujah. That's more. Listen, there are more. I feel in your spirit you want to come, but it's holding you back. You're struggling and you're fighting it. But I hear God saying that don't put off for what you can do tomorrow. Do it right now today. I feel God is saying that this is the time. You might walk out that door Y'all better hear me. This is a very serious moment. You might walk out that door and never again be able to walk back again. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you a matter of fact. Turn it back up. The spirit is going to move to that song. He, come on, let's stand on our feet. We give. Turn it up, son. your heads with me and repeat after me say dear Jesus I come to you I admit that I've made some mistakes in my life I'm not worthy but God I ask you right now to forgive me of all my sins Lord I'm so sorry and right now I ask Jesus Christ to come in my life right now I affirm that I belong to Jesus I no longer I no longer will be the same today I got some issues God but I'm giving them over to you fix it Jesus fix it Jesus like you said you would in Jesus name we pray amen could you all please sit on this row? And on this row here, could you all let them sit down here? Amen. Glory, we worship. Every season, where would I be? If not for your grace, you came to my I want to thank you for your 